This is a lesson 3-4 uh, video to show how to prove and rule a journal. In a separate video, I will go through uh, the MindTap assignment and sort of the, the assignment piece of this, but I think it would get to be a little bit long to do them both together. Uh, so let's talk about uh, proving and ruling a journal. Um, it's going to uh, there's two different sort of uh, uh, steps to use there. Um, we're going to talk about how to prove cash as well. Um, and then we'll talk briefly about how to make uh, corrections to errors that happen as well. Um, so what it means by proving a journal is, uh, and this is proving a journal, is essentially making sure that the debits and the credits equal each other. And you would do this, and again, this is a little antiquated because most of the time uh, this these, these journals are all done using online software. And so you are able to kind of check this stuff as you go. Um, and you do that a lot by usually checking the balance sheet to make sure that, that things are, are equal there. Um, but the principles here allow you to understand what to do and why it is done. Um, when journals were just basically like big books, like the journal entries that you've been making, you would have this big ledger and there would just be columns to make all of your entries um, and there would be different pages. And so typically a business is going to uh, prove at the end of a page or at the end of the month. And so we'll see, uh, maybe see as, as we're going through this stuff, Delgado Web Services proves their journal after each page, but then also uh, proves the journal and then proves cash at the end of each month. Uh, so we'll do all those steps today. Um, but this is proving a journal. It is just basically um, totaling all of the columns um, of your like your general column, the debits and the credits there, total those, total your sales credit column, and total cash debits and credits as well. Um, add them all up and then make sure that the debits and the credits equal each other. So this is a summary and I'll show you when we're doing the page. I like to do this in uh, like an Excel or a Google Sheets format because it's a little easier to set up and I'll show you some formulas and some uh, things that are just good practice with uh, any sort of Excel document or a Google Sheet document as well. But as we can see, after we add all of the totals in each of the columns, like all of the general debit columns, all the credit columns, if we add all those down, uh, debits equal the credits. And that is what proving a journal actually means, is making sure that you're verifying that total debits equals the credits uh, to stay in balance. Ruling a journal is the second part. And ruling just means kind of drawing lines. Um, this happens again, like I said, at the end of a page. Um, at the end of a page, so like say Michael Delgado, this is his journal, and this is page one of his journal. He started it, his first transaction happened on January 2nd, and he's made and he's filled up his page with transactions all the way to January 23rd. On the very last line of that journal, and so he's, it, January's not over, and so he's not done making transactions yet, so we're going to end up going on to page two, but again, uh, you do need to prove and rule uh, at the end of each page. And so at the end of the thing, you're going to total all the columns. So this is what I was, the, you saw the summary of before. We totaled all the debits in the general column, all the credits in the general column, all the sales credits, all the debits in the cash, all the credits of the cash, and you add them up. So ruling just means drawing a line under something. So We'll say that entry 25 is the last on this page, like there's 25 cells or 25 rows. And so you're going to draw a single line. So this is what ruling it means with like a ruler. Uh, you would draw a single line underneath the last entry of that month. So you're drawing that single line if you see that. Underneath that, you're going to write the date that you're going to rule this. So we're doing it on the 23rd. That was after the last uh entry there. You're going to write carried forward, which means it's going to be carried forward. These totals are going to be carried forward to the next page. Uh, because again, we're not done with January yet. And we're assuming that Delgado Web Services has more entries to make for January. So we're going to carry it forward, uh, put a check in the post reference, and then you're going to just write all of the totals here. Um, what ruling means then the column totals is when you're going to rule underneath this, you're going to rule a double line 
double underline means that they are totals and that the debits do equal the credit. So this is paired with that previous screen that you saw uh, where it shows the summary of uh, all of the totals, verifying that the debits do equal the credits, all right? So rule double lines indicate the amounts are totals, that they are totals of all these columns, um, and that the sum of the debits do indeed equal the credits. So starting a new journal page, so we finished this page, was page one. That was the last one, so we write that on the last line. Carrying it forward to the next page, page two, you're always going to write page two up there. You're going to write the summary of these totals. You're going to carry them forward to the next page. And then you write in the account total that these totals here are ones that were brought forward from January 23rd. And now you'll notice as well uh, that we rewrite Jan.23 uh, on the date because it is the first entry of that page. And so if anytime you start a new page, you do have to rewrite uh, that. So we're on row number one. You got to rewrite January there, J-A-N. And then up here, 2020 would be, you know, the year that we're in. Uh, January 23rd brought forward those amounts. This is important because when you rule, uh, when you prove this page, after you continue to make a bunch of transactions, uh, you are going to end up including these debits and credits in uh, those transactions. And so it's important to keep those numbers consistent um, and moving forward. All right, so page two, write our date, brought forward, and record the totals from the previous page. Uh, so we said journals are ruled at the end of each page. However, they're also ruled at the end of each month, typically. Businesses do this a little bit differently sometimes. Uh, but when you are proving and ruling a journal at the end of the month, it's a good way to just check your monthly sales, how much cash you have on hand, uh, and things of that nature, like your you know outstanding liabilities, uh, who owes you money, other assets you have. It's good to just check in and look each month to see how your month was. Um, <clears throat> and so this is page two and we'll say on a normal journal, there would be like 25 rows. As you'll see here, we've only used 15, we'll say of this next page. However, uh, Delgado Web Services is still going to rule and prove this uh, at the end of the month. Then starting in February, we're gonna start a whole new page, page three for February. We're not just gonna keep going down. Um, it's just a way to keep it clean to make sure that uh, you're looking month to month because uh, remember this is all organized in chronological order to make it easy to find transactions. And so we don't want things to be confusing and hard to find if we need to look back. Uh, so again, ruling means drawing a single line under the last uh, entry, meaning that anything under that needs to be totaled. Write the date that we're going to do that is on January 31st, last day of the month, or the last day that you make an entry. Write the totals. Uh, write totals in the account title because, again, we're totaling this. We're not bringing anything forward or carrying it forward. We're going to total things for the month. So write totals there. Uh, write each column total below. So, again, on this page, these were amounts that were brought forward from last month. We include those in addition to any debits and credits that we record for this next page. And then rule with a double line showing that they are totals for the month and that the debits do equal the credits. So you're gonna have the same summary page every time you prove and rule a journal, you're gonna have a summary like you saw on that first slide. And that's the summary uh, that you'll see there for the month. If you'll notice, we're still on page two, but we're looking at those amounts that were totaled up from page one. We're including those along with these other entries that were made in January. And then we're going to add everything, including those amounts brought forward to get our totals, summarize the totals in, in debit columns or credit columns. So uh, our general debit total 5748 goes under the general debit. Our general credit of 2525 25 goes right there and so forth. And then you just add down to get the grand totals. And as you'll notice, 
the totals equal. They always have to equal, debits have to equal the credits to keep things in balance. All right, proving cash is another concept that we'll talk about. Um, proving cash means determining that the amount of cash agrees with the accounting records um, and to make sure that uh, in, in a, today's day and age, you do so many uh, electronic transactions um, in your accounting system to prove cash, you would basically be uh, ensuring that the amount of cash that you've uh, said that you have used in your accounting system matches what your bank statement actually says. Uh, so matches what your cash account or your checking account that you run for your business actually says. You want to make sure that those two things equal each other because if they don't, a mistake was made somewhere and a mistake was either then made uh, on your part or possibly um, from the bank as well. So you want to make sure that you fix those things. Uh, so. To prove cash, uh, you kind of follow this setup, and MindTap has this all laid out for you, um, as well as the working papers. Do have the format all set up for you, so you don't have to draw this out. Um, but you figure out how much cash you had on hand at the beginning of the month. And you, if you remember, Delgado Web Services just started in January. And so even though the first transaction was an investment by the owner, uh, the cash on hand at the very beginning of the month was zero dollars because they started with zero. Uh, it went up right away once they got that investment, but uh, it was zero dollars at the beginning of the month. Um, plus total cash received during the month. And that is uh, that comes from to kind of go back and I'll show you this, but it comes back from uh, the cash debits. That's how much cash you received for the month because those are all the things that made your cash account go up, right? And so then you're gonna use that number, basically minus this number, to see how much cash you still have on hand because this is cash coming in, this is cash going out. Credits decrease cash, debits increase it. So those are the two numbers we're really gonna work with. Uh, so 7,120 uh, minus the credits that we received uh, or the credits that went out, the credits that lowered our cash balance. Uh, equals 2,597, double rule of that, meaning that's the total, uh, and that's how much cash should be in the bank still. If you were to check your bank statement or if Delgado Web Services were to check their, their checking account statement, it should say $2,597. So what do we do if there are errors? Now, MindTap is going to have uh, you guys do a little bit different thing, but... Uh, in general, one of the biggest things with accounting to know is that you never go through and just straight up delete any entry. All right. You never just delete things and redo it. Uh, errors need to be recorded and seen as well uh, as all of the entries. And so in a lot of accounting systems, if you enter something in incorrectly, instead of just going in and changing the numbers, you should technically uh delete that, but cross it out so that you can still see it. And then you're going to record the correct amount uh, near it or in a separate entry. So uh, what you'll see here is how you would do so on like a paper journal. And so there are a few different ways and, and say, you know, depending on where you make errors and how much time has gone by since you notice them, you do a few things. So the first one is if an error is recorded um, and you notice it, basically, you know, right away, or if you just, so in this case, they put in, um, this was like received cash from sales, uh, for making a sale in the amount of $4,500. And when making this entry, they wrote in $4,500. And then over here, they wrote $450. So that is incorrect. Since that's been written in there, um, a lot of times since these things are permanent, you don't want to make sure that you're not just erasing things. Uh, accountants would use a pen, not a pencil to be able to, you, you want to see the errors as well, um, just to make sure that nothing has been deleted and gone missing. So you would make a cross out of that and then write the new amount in small numbers up at the top. Um, if you make a full uh, amount and you record $400, so in this case, um, they spent cash on advertising. And so they said, we spent $400 of cash on advertising. They made that entry and then realized, no, actually, wait, it should have been $40. And they noticed it right away. So then they just made a, a they crossed out lightly. So you could still kind of see it, but they crossed out each 
thing that was wrong and then just made a new entry right underneath it. All right, so you can still see the old one, but it is crossed out. When you know when you're totaling things, you're not totaling the things that are crossed out, only the ones that are correct. Uh, and they made a new entry. Third um, thing is sometimes you make a mistake. So in this case, we're looking at uh, the January 29th transaction and a mistake was made uh, in this in, in, in terms of it being a the wrong account title used. Um, and then there are different entries that are recorded after an incorrect entry is made. So you would technically use the next blank space um, that is available. You would cross out your mistake and then make it on the next blank space available. Um, draw neat lines again through all the incorrect parts. Uh, record the correct items on the same lines uh, directly above each of the canceled parts. Uh, and that's it. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about the MindTap assignment and how this all looks on the online site.